welcome to the show. This is Webmaster Paul for Freshwater Diver 1. watching these videos in sequence will realize that last week we were at Mouth's Tower and we're just now leaving that car park to go to Air Force. These road trips are filmed in real time just to show you how quick it is to go from one layby to the next. They're all just a short distance away from each other. Air Force car parking is five pounds per two hours. So, yeah, you've got toilets here, they've got water, uh, there's a little shop there to buy the odd things. You've got to remember there's the waterfalls here, they're quite spectacular. It's a long walk around those, and that alone will probably take you about an hour to an hour and a half if you're quickish. So, you might want to stay here four hours, but however you work this, uh, family can go to the waterfalls where you can go diving, kayaking, whatever you're into down at the beach which we'll show you next. So out of the car park down this path across the road and here's your gear. Here's why we dropped off that heavy gear. We now have a three to four hundred meter walk, but it's along this pleasurable scenic path you see before you.
a lot to explain here for everyone. Some bathers use the grassy area you see with fold up chairs and tables. Very posh indeed. Meanwhile, paddle boarders furiously pump away with their inflators, whilst kayakers and canoers effortlessly slide into the water and head off on their next adventure. For divers, we have a sensitive matter to explain here. Now, the old, this old water dive is pretty decent. This, there is a trench almost directly south that drops to 60 metres, but this is an altitude dive, which means 43 max on air. The dive plan was agreed to do 20 metres and then to follow that contour for 15 minutes with me on the left side, the deeper side as we turned right, before moving into shallower water. That's towards the shore on the right side. It was my first dive at this site, with one of my dive buddies from Sunderland being dive leader on this occasion. Her husband and my better half giving shore cover to us on what was a very hot, sunny day in summer. We headed straight out, following the gradual slope down to our planned depth of 20 metres, then to the northwest shore, looking for 9 metres, when my buddy found something which should not have been here. That find saw me asking questions and putting in some book grinding research on this area, which I'll cover shortly. So the scene was set as 40 or some bathers watched in awe as we trundled down to the beach front in full kit. We were sweating buckets until we let rip with our dry suit direct feed pressure inflators. Thank heavens! Sweet, especially after purging the excess air. Phew! For those unfamiliar with dive gear, that pressurised air means we go from 130 plus degrees to minus 10 in a few seconds. The direct feed on the dry suit is used to maintain the air pressure in the suit as we descend down. Without it, the suit would compress down and crush us. <laughs> Anyone for diving? <laughs> it's not that bad guys. Our dive started, like most other dives, going through the routine of check and cross check each other's gear on the surface, with the final in water all ok, let's go. We headed straight out, following the gradual slope down to our planned depth of 20 metres, then to the northwest shore. It was to then find 9 metres and return around the bay, which we had guessed would see us just off from the pier end, after about 33 to 34 minutes. Then come along the pier for a bit of treasure hunting along its eastern side. But as we headed around and coming up to 18 metres, I think it was, for the shallower 9 metres, my d buddy grabbed me and asked me to clean something. So naturally I was saying, no, I'm not going to clean that filthy thing. <laughs> but after a little bit of a banter, yeah, I folded and I asked for it and proceeded to clean. Okay, so it's a metal tube and a signal back. I told it scrap value, five pounds. But then I felt a flat end with a ridge around it. And I thought immediately, that's odd. When I got to the opposite end of this pipe, it was cone shaped. Very gently, I pl placed it gently back on the seabed, but once again, grabbed by a very exasperated diver, signalling I'm mad, what am I doing? I said it will blow, leave it, but she insisted and tried to bag it in her goodie bag. Well, it was a little bit, little bit large for the goodie bag, but she managed to carry it along. So eventually we got to where we thought we would be, just at the end of the pier, and right enough as we turned in, up come the uh, stumps of the pier. And uh, so we carried on with a little bit of a ratch around the pier, looking for the old buried, well, surface treasure really, on the, on the bottom of the uh, lake bed there. 
but uh, as we arose out of the water and I have to tell you she when she's excited <laughs> she gets very vocal um, and husband and my better half were over there doing the show cover for us but she shouted out to her husband in front of some 40 odd innocent sunbavers we found a bomb can you dismantle it now her husband used to do this sort of work but the crowd on hearing this news and seeing this large object in the hands they simply jumped up and ran for cover such a commotion um, I don't think we'll ever see that again but uh, oh boy I wish we had GoPros back then her husband came running down with my good lady he took the thing off her had a good look at it and was able to pronounce to everybody that had run away it's okay you can come back it's safe uh, apparently this was a dud so all was well in the end but um, yeah that led to me doing some research on this area uh, as to why this was here and I actually discovered that this tranquil and peaceful place right now was back in World War II a mortar training area for the army and I learned that they made wooden rafts which would then be taken out, taken out into the lake and anchored not too far off the shore with the idea of hitting them with these mortar shells that they were practicing with. Now I also discovered quite accidentally that the RAF used to do the same or used to use the same idea out at sea for bomb dropping practice around the Moray Firth to mention one area hint hint to the divers out there so for anyone that was there on that day and recalls that having just heard this we do apologize so to those planning to dive this area yeah if you if you've got your hands down in the silt and you feel something hard it might just be one of these mortars so play safe out there guys
This is Webmaster Paul for Freshwater Diver One on YouTube. Thank you for your likes and subscribes, they're much appreciated. We'll be uploading videos every Friday. See you next Friday. This is Webmaster Paul for Freshwater Diver 1. Thank you for supporting this channel.